So now we've got a whole chapter on synthesis, and synthesis straight up is just one of the most challenging parts of all of organic chemistry. Uh, you can memorize every single reaction, have a great command of all of them, and still struggle with synthesis. Synthesis is more than just memorizing the reactions, although that's a great place to start, uh, but it's how you organize them in your head. You need to know what functional groups you can convert other functional groups into, all the different reactions of a certain functional group. Uh, you need to know how to make the carbon chain bigger, how to make the carbon chain smaller, all these sorts of things, and that's what you need to organize in your head. And that's what I hope to accomplish in at least introducing you to in this chapter. And once you're introduced to it, working numerous examples is the only way to really get a good command on synthesis. Uh, so let's just jump in and start and talk about uh, functional group conversions. And the first one we're going to start with was, is converting an alkane into an alkyl halide. So and this is nice. If you've got an alkane, the only thing you know how to do with it is put a leaving group on it. So, and that's halogenated. Uh, in this case, Br2 and light, and you'll find that we use bromine way more often than chlorine. One, uh, it's much more specific, and so I can make sure the uh, bromine in this case goes to a certain location, the more substituted location, whereas chlorine you usually get a mixture of products uh, as long as there are multiple options of where it can go. And so uh, you'll find for synthesis then, because we're trying to get the best yield as well, we want selectivity uh, and we'll focus on reactions that accomplish that. And so Br2 in light or Br2 in heat or Br2 in peroxide, any of those putting the bromine on the more substitute carbon is where we'll start here. And so uh, alkane to alkyl halide is the first thing you're going to do. And if you have an alkane, that's the only relevant reaction you know how to do uh, in that case. So we'll find out with a lot of synthesis reactions, we work them backwards. Uh, but if you've got an alkane to start with, rest assured the first step you're going to do is Br2 uh, and light, free radical bromination. So the next functional group conversion will build off the last one. So we'll start with the alkyl halide and we'll convert it into an alkene. So you might recall that your halogens are your most common leaving groups, and if you've got a good leaving group, you can do SN1, SN2, E1, E2, and it's those elimination reactions that will form alkenes. Now generally we'll try and do E2 preferably over E1 for synthesis because it's much more selective. Uh, for an E1 reaction, SN1 almost always competes and you get a mixture of products, and so it's, it's difficult to get a good yield of either product. Uh, but with E2, I can make sure E2 happens over SN2 in many cases. So one, if I've got a tertiary halide like we do here, uh, then E2 is going to predominate because SN2 largely doesn't really happen with tertiary halides. Uh, and I want to use a, uh, a nice strong base like sodium hydroxide, sodium methoxide, uh, sodium ethoxide are really common. Or I can, even without a tertiary halide, I can make sure E2 is really predominant by using a bulky base here. And here's potassium terbutoxide or potassium t-butoxide, the most common bulky base you'll see. Uh, and in this case, with a tertiary halide, my regular non-bulky base forms the more substitute alkene. We'll call that the Zaitsev. Lots of alternate spellings for Zaitsev. Uh, or in this case, we can get the less substitute alkene with the bulky base. And some people call that anti-Zaitsev. Some people will call it Hoffman. I'll just go Hoffman, that's a little more common, but you could also call it anti uh, And In this case, that's a great distinguishment you can make before forming the more substituted alkene or the less substituted alkene based on which base you're doing. But again, we're doing E2 here specifically, so we needed a strong base either way, whether it's bulky or non-bulky is the difference. The next functional group conversion we'll look at is actually converting an alkane into an alkyne. So, and to convert that alkane to an alkyne, we've got to have two leaving groups. So technically it's not an alkane, it's a, a dihalide here. So, and the two leaving groups either got to be on the same carbon, like they are here, and we'll call that geminal, or they've got to be on adjacent carbons, and we'll call that vicinal. And we're going to do two successive steps of E2 elimination. And we don't use the normal E2 bases uh, when we're trying to form an alkyne. We'll generally use sodium amide, NaNH2. And we'll follow that up with water just to reprotonate, like you learned in the alkyne chapter. Uh, but the key is I needed two leaving groups, not just one, since we're doing two rounds of E2 elimination. Uh, but now we've gone from turning halides into alkenes or turning halides into alkynes, both of which are pretty useful in terms of synthesis.